All right, we are set to go. We were in a fill mode there awaiting Scott Ferrozo, and he is set now because Ferrozo replaces Jerry Bolander, who could not continue due to an injury. Ferrozo and Abbott now square up in the semifinals with the winner to take on Mark Coleman. Here is the tale of the tape. Well, how do you like those two disciplines? Not your run-of-the-mill disciplines. Street fighting and pit fighting, which means both guys just want to rumble. Six feet, five, ten. Here comes the weight. I know you'll enjoy this. Almost 600 pounds. A little less than a third of a ton. Huntington, California and Shakopee, Minnesota. Here comes Scott Ferrozo, who won earlier tonight as an alternate. His dad played football for the Minnesota Vikings. He was an All-America football player at the Division II level as a nose guard. He wrestled in high school. He threw the shot foot and discus. 117-7 and seven in high school wrestling matches. He says, I will bring this fight to the next level. He's managed and trained by Donnie Fry, his strength and conditioning coach, his Becky Levi, and his trainer is also Gino DiMaria. And he took out Sam Fulton in the alternate match to get here. And he's talking to Big John McCarthy. He's excited. He might really be feeling some destiny. He told us during the fighter interviews that he felt, even as an alternate, he would get in the finals. He said it was destiny. He, he was right. Yep, he can deadlift 700 pounds or two and a third tank Abbott. Well, there's no doubt there's power there, but he's bigger than the last time we saw him, and conditioning will be a factor with both these athletes. Here comes the well-rested tank and an entourage worthy of many boxing camps. Nicely coordinated with their outfits. God, they even looked like they were in formation there surrounding Tank. Tank in the lead position. His hobbies include going to bars, getting crazy, and raising hell. Okay, there's one stat that I don't think we've listed here that Tank wanted uh, Jeff and I to be aware of. Tank believes that if you take every UFC competitor and you take their arrest records for assault, his would top the combined total of all the combatants. Now, I don't know what kind of a, a record that is, but that's something that Tank said. His first fight since his suspension from the UFC. The G-Man Rich Coins will introduce the fighters formally. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the octagon over 650 pounds of fighting talent, our second semifinal match of the evening. Please welcome a UFC veteran with a record of one and one in the octagon. He specializes in the art of pit fighting from Shakopee, Minnesota, fighting out of Las Vegas, 31 years old, 5'10", 350 pounds. They call him the pit bull, Scott Ferrozo. Ferrozo. And his opponent, the street fighter from Huntington Beach, California. Two-time UFC veteran, a record of four and two in the octagon, 31 years old, six feet, 300 pounds. You know him, you love him, Tank Abbott. How about the irony here? In UFC 8, the main draw, David versus Goliath, Ferrozo was beaten by Bolander. That was Ferrozo's first fight. Bolander choking him out after really Ferrozo dominated much of the fight, flinging the little man all over, pinning him up against the fence, but unable to finish. Tonight, he replaces Bolander in the main draw. Tank lands a right quickly. Ferrozo counters back. <laughs> Looks like they're gonna go hammers away at the back of Tank's head. Tank is gonna work to try to take Ferrozo down. No, no, there you go, sweetheart. And this might be the first time that Ferrozo has ever been bustled around in the octagon. Well, you know, he's been training with Don Fry, a very experienced veteran of the octagon. Looks like they're satisfied to go toe to toe. And they are going toe to toe. And Ferrozo has some Tank, but Tank gets behind him and pushes him into the fence. 
See if we see some foot stomp in here by Tank. He's in a position he could really crush Ferozo's toes, but he's just looking for one thing. The right hand. The right hand. Ferozo tries to kick back with that right knee. And he's cut. Above the right eye, it's not affecting his vision at this point, but a couple more punches there might open it up wide. Tank really grounding him here, taking his time. This is a patient Tank Abbott here at UFC 11. He seems to be taking everything a little more seriously than before. He said he threw out a disciplined training regime, and he said he's going to rely on instinct. That's what happens in the octagon. That's what he wants out of his training. Perozo tried to land that right knee, now the left hand off the fence, but Tank's got control right now. Fuck you! Oh. And they're not sharing uh, pleasantries. Not at all. A little bit of talking going on between the two of them. There's Don Fry, the predator. He works the corner of Ferozo. Tank content to hang on to that fence, use it for leverage, land some punches. There's the left to the back of Ferozo's back, which, which is a big back. A knee by oh. Ferozo. Oh. Tank's not going to be able to take too many of those. Those are definitely doing damage. Right hand by Tank. An uppercut by Tank. Ferozo lands. An uppercut by Ferozo. A knee by Ferozo. I think those knees are doing damage to Tank. That's what made the difference. On the inside, it was the knee. Two street fighters in the octagon. Now, if Ferozo is to do this knee right, he's not doing it correctly. He needs to thrust his hips, not just the leg. If he Stop thrusts his hips, he goes right through those ribs. John McCarthy separates the fight. Leading on Ferozo. So he will be checked out. And in the exchange of strikes, and that's I almost think Ferozo might be leading. Okay. Right. Those knees made the, the difference. Back up, Dr. Richard oh, Estrago, the chief medical yeah. advisor, and Leon Tabs quickly take care of Ferozo. He's been cleared for battle. You're ready to go. Get over there right now. Get back in the fucking corner. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on. Here we go. And boy, these two are going to approach each other again with big hands. And they start. Ferozo landed a left. And he's dancing a little oh, bit. Right hand by Abbott. Another right by Abbott. Right there, Ferozo should use the knees right there. He's got him, but he's got to get his hips forward. See, see how his hips stay back? There's no power in those knees. If he can thrust his hips forward, he can break those ribs. You can work, Jack. You can work, this Scott. He's got a lot of body to thrust. When I first started kickboxing, I thought the knee was equivalent to a body shot, but there's no comparison. But that knee sinks in. There's a toe stop by Ferozo. I don't know if that's a good idea. It might remind Tank that he can stop. Oh, without a doubt. Ferozo's doing a smart thing, though, uh, Don. He's actually hanging on to average shorts. And those, that's keeping them within range of those knees. Right, those you knees can be used to the groin, they can be used to the legs. You don't have to use it for the gut. You can even use it to the head. If you can put your hand on top of his head, you can hit him with a knee. On, Two big boys. Ferozo landing a right. His cup doesn't look too bad. On, the blood on Abbott's back is from Ferozo. A rapidity of right hands by Ferozo, oh, but not powerful. Yeah, all small little oh, rabbit punches, work. but in the eyes of a judge, that might be enough. He's striking. The knees have been making a difference for Ferozo right there. And he continues to clutch onto Tank short. Yeah, again. Come on, man, let's go. Come on, Tank. You see Tank's hand coming down. That won't stop a knee. What Tank needs to do to stop those knees is get his legs in between Ferozo's. Once Tank hits, hits Ferozo low, puts his legs in between, he won't be getting knee. You see how he's standing square. 
A little over five minutes in. But Rozo up against the octagon fence. And he's been landing effective knees. When does Tank make a little bit of a move here? I think again, he's biding his time. He's trying to wait for an opening to present itself. I think if Ferrozo reaches down with both hands again to try to grab the shorts, there's nothing stopping Tank from hitting him in the head. Both his arms are committed. Ferrozo trying to land a right uppercut. Now he chops away at the back of Abbott. I still think Ferrozo should be using the knees. His hands don't really seem to have that much effect on Tank. Now this could end up being a war of attrition. Tank seems to be really in a in a hold position. He's not really committing himself to any form of attack. And no. see, both hands are down. Why isn't he bringing that right hand? Like, there it goes. There it goes. He could have done that a bunch of times. Tank might be waiting for a break where he can try to knock out his opponent. Like the hands are down again. Why isn't he bringing it up? Interesting. It seems that Tank doesn't want to let go of defense. Again, short little right hand from the back of Tank Tank. He's told us before that doesn't bother him. There's a knee. That knee will. But that knee does not have to go high. It can go low. He's well protected his Abbott in the groin area. There's a right hand. Chopping away to the side by Ferrozo. Another. They're not, there's nothing really in those matches no. at all. I mean, now they see, look good, but they're nothing. A knee to the midsection. The knee is the only technique that Tank has really reacted to. And look at the toes. Tank can stop those toes, and he hasn't even begun to do it. Two, three of those, and you're going to see Ferrozo doing the uh, Mexican hat dance, trying to tiptoe around to avoid it. Absolutely. 7.20 in. 15 minute time limit with one three minute OT in the center. Tank continues to just be very patient. We're over halfway now, 740. That's the regulation. There's still an overtime if neither fighter has tapped or submitted. Well, you know, conditioning is going to be a factor. When you get guys this big, uh, they're usually not as good a shape as the smaller fighters. And I wonder if that's what Tank is back in, banking out here. Let Ferrosa punch himself out. But boy, those knees are effective. I've never been a big proponent of letting your opponent just punch or kick himself out, bouncing off your body. Now, Ferrosa trying to get off the fence. There's another knee. If he did those knees with his hips and got his hips behind him, they would be really damaging. He's just inexperienced with using the knee, but even the, the ones he's using are having an effect. I know you're saying, Dragon, there's no ferocity in that right hand by Ferrozo, but, you know, if he continues to land, it scores. Yeah, it's scoring, it's, and it's impressing the judges, too. Right. Well, it's hitting a target area. It's doing some damage. Uh, not enough to stop a tank at it, but... Uh, it's an attempt to, to launch an offense, so it, it, it is scoring. Jeff, I know you say a guy might not punch himself out, but can he knee himself out? I don't know if he's going to knee himself out, but Tank went so far as to cross in front of Ferrozo and put his leg outside his just to stop the knees. He's doing it again, and that's going to limit him. If he cocks his hips that way, he's got no left hand to use, and the right hand, he's really not going to be able to bring his body or shoulder or hip forward to put anything on it. Ferrozo's got a 52-pound advantage on the tank. And you got a what? Oh, Abbott almost getting him there with that. Tank went for the trip. <laughs> and Ferrozo showing great balance on his feet. He's not being knocked down easily. Hey, he was a terrific nose guard, and nose guards play oh, good, low good. to the ground. You've got to have a good center of gravity. And Ferrozo not at all intimidated by the 10. Crowd getting a little bit restless. I'm a little surprised oh, that he hasn't opened it up. Another knee to Tank's stomach. Another knee, which allowed him to get that grip around his head. John McCarthy warning the fighters, telling them he's got five minutes before the first overtime. I mean, Don Fry looks on for Ferroza. Their feet are there and finally stopped his foot. 
And Ferrozo picked that foot up very quickly. He could do it a whole bunch of times. You see, he's knee tank in the, in the left leg now, the thigh area. Like I said, that knee can be used to the head, to the body, to the legs. Ferrozo doing a pretty good Fred Astaire it's, imitation. You saw how close the feet were. And Ferrozo missed with, with a big foot stomp. And you're right, it is a big foot. Oh, yeah, I mean, they're on top of one another. They could really go ahead and hinder each other's movement. This is not footsie, it's the UFC. And there's four minutes and 15 seconds left in regulation in the semifinals with the winner to take on Mark Coleman. For Rosa, replaced an injured Jerry Bolander in the semis. I don't really know what Tank's strategy is. I have is. no idea. I don't either, know Mark. how he thinks this is where he needs to be. I, I, it seems to me he'd want to get in the center of that ring, try to land something. Despite his disadvantage, disadvantageous position, Ferrozo is still the aggressor. He's scoring. He's striking. Another knee by Ferrozo. I don't believe Tank thinks he can throw 350 pounds. Well, certainly not in a unskillful manner. He's not going to be able to. He needs to set him up and use it. Ferrozo ripping a couple of good right hands in there. He really wound up on those dragons. Right, he, he's in a position where he can make the contact, but he can't get his body behind it because he's pinned so tight against this fence. And there is enough action there here. Goes, the he does not have to separate the fighters. And it's amazing that Tank won't try it. Tank hasn't tried the knee at all. He could be cowering with the knees. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he's thinking. Except maybe he feels if he backs up to throw a good knee, Ferrozo's going to get out of this. Under three minutes to go in regulation. Ferrozo get out of this or Tank get out of this? Right now, I think Ferrozo is dominating this position. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. All, the point I'm making is Tank seems to be the one who wants to stay here. That's correct. He doesn't, I, he doesn't want to get out, but he's not scoring points. Unless Tank is waiting for the overtime. overtime and then hoping he can knock out his opponent with a couple of, of quick punches from the standing punk, position. Punk, 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 punk. But he's going to separate him. With still 2.30 left to regulate, so here's Tank's chance if he wants to throw up his punches. Perosa landed a jab, Tank counter. Tank missing wildly. He's looking for the one punch knockout. He certainly is, and I don't know if that's due to shape. Ferrozo hitting Tank ever twice. Couple of good right hands by Ferrozo. Now Tank is backed up against the fence. Ferrozo. He said he liked the uppercut in his interview. How the heck did they end up here again? Oh, no. <laughs> now doesn't like it with a minute 40 to go in regulation. Tank seems to be settling for well, we a defensive have... posture where there's no action. One has to question shape and certainly tactic and strategy here. Well, I tell you, this fight comes alive when these guys get in the center of the ring. And they go oh, yeah. here, it's, it's pretty much uh, dead in the water. And I'll tell you something else, during that last exchange, Ferrozo scored more points. Absolutely. Now we know why Tank wants to stay here. Ferrozo might be a better puncher than Tank. Minutes to go in regulation. Three Tank's minute overtime to follow. That's a pretty good grapple. I'm surprised he hasn't gone for a takedown. He can easily take Ferrozo down if you want to get to the ground. I will make this, grab a leg. I'll make this comment right now. Coleman is sitting pretty against the winner of this. These guys are spending a lot of energy, and these big bodies are going to take some time to have to recuperate. I tell you, it must be good karma because Coleman had the same situation the last UFC. I watched the fights and and by the time Don got there, he was tired. Abbott holding Ferrozo against the fence, but Ferrozo hitting Abbott with knees and rabbit punches to the back of the neck. Come on. The fight thus far has dominated by Ferrozo, despite being in a poor position. Final seconds of regulation, 10 seconds remaining. And we will go to overtime. We'll find out Tank's strategy right now. He might have been playing possum. Break it apart, break it apart. Break it apart. Break it apart.
He's got one big burst here where he's got to do oh, something. Tank is tired. He is. Tank is tired. He's fatigued. You know, for me, there's there's never a good strategy to take these fights into overtime because you're going to have to fight another guy right after it. And, of course, you're going to be tired. Leon Tabs checks the cut on Ferrozo's face, which isn't bad. Tank Abbott is tired. If he's going to make a move, it's got to be on the feet. It's got to be in this standing situation because if they end up against the fence, it's not going to help them. Tank is up in weight. And, and Ferrozo is challenging the Not crowd. Ferrozo is putting his arms up, and the crowd responded positively, taking away what seemed to be a real tank-oriented crowd. Right. You know what? One thing about audiences I've always noticed, they like the winner. They don't care <laughs> if you're hometown or not. They want the winner to win. I think they also like effort. Yes, and they're recognizing Ferrozo for that. Here we go. One three-minute overtime. Are you ready? It goes to the scorecard if it doesn't end Let's in this three-minute session. Here's Abbott's chance for Rozo giving him a smile. This crowd is on their feet. We got thousands of people standing on their feet for this one. Solid left by Tank. Good exchange by Abbott. Ferrozo might be better off going for a clinch here. Not allowing Abbott the chance for a KO. Ferrozo throwing lots of leather. Ferrozo oh. with a kick. Tank responded with a right hand counter. And it scored. It hit him flush on the That's head. That's the danger of a leg kick. You're going to throw it. You have to hold your hands out. Oh, you have to throw it with your hands down. Tank just ate two punches, working his way in. Crowd doesn't want this defensive stalemate here. And again, Ferrozo shows he's not a bad. Boxer for a big man with little or no experience. The Predator, Don Fry, they're coaching through the fence. He has got the best view in the house for seeing the action, and he is going to coach Ferrozo here. Tank is going to hear every word of it. Well, if I was John McCarthy, I'd go ahead and break it because we know exactly what's going to happen if these guys stay here. There's not going to be an exchange. There's not going to be a clear cut winner here. And that cut is not going to bother Ferrozo if it doesn't go in the right eye. It's not a bad cut. That might be Tank's only salvation is to really open up that wound so that it bleeds profusely. I don't think he's got enough time to do it, Jeff. I don't think he has the energy to do it, Bruce. He is dead on his feet. I think John ought to go ahead and break him, put it back in the center of the ring. A minute 15 left in the semifinals of UFC 11. The winner meets Mark Coleman. Jerry Bolander could not continue. Scott Ferrozo came off the bench, and Ferrozo trying to work his way into the championship match. Uh, a minute to go. Tank has got to know that if he hangs onto this bench, he is not going to win this match. Get back in the center. He needs to get back in the center of the ring and make something happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Well, this strategy by Tank is, does not seem to be uh, working for him. He should give it up, get the center of the ring. Unless he understands that he's not going to win, and this is the least attritting position he can get to. And unless he understands he's just got no air tonight. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's vulnerable in the middle. He doesn't feel he has enough energy to carry himself. Here, he doesn't have to worry so much about carrying himself. One last chance. Here they go. And Tank looking like a guy right there who had one too many on the street. He looks like a man right now that has seen a better day. He's one option here. He must knock Ferrozo out. Good punch by Ferrozo. They trade as the final seconds go on. And this bout is over. It goes to the scorecard. And I don't think there's any question that Ferrozo will get the decision. He was the aggressor. He stayed active. Well, you know, he had the best strikes. There was absolutely no grappling here. We said Tank was treating this differently. He had a strategy. He was patient. That may have worked to his disadvantage in this case. I think it patience born out of. 
fatigue. I think so too. I think it was a case of exhaustion. Sometimes you want to do stuff in boxing Let's and you can't. They call it done not being Tank able Gavin. to get off. I've seen some of the best fighters in the world been unable to get off. Right. But, but that's not always because you're not in shape. It's just because maybe you overtrain too much or something else. I'm not saying that's what happened, but I'm saying that Abbott could not get off. I think those knees that uh, he was getting hit with, Fer Ferrazzo was hitting with, with the knees to the body. They, they caused him to leave his uh, uh, hands down and not be able to punch. Let's go to Go-Go Goins for the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to go to a judge's decision for our second semifinal bout. Judge Kurt Shearer scores the bout to Ferrozo. <laughs> Judge Steve Necklia scores the match to Ferrozo. And Ernest Hart Jr. Ferrozo, the winner of our second semifinal, Scott the Pitbull Ferrozo. He ought to save Ferozo. his energy. But it was a good performance by Ferrozo, a unanimous decision. He's recognized by the judges. Tank has to go back to the drawing board and regroup for the ultimate, ultimate. Ferrozo is still fresh if you want to say that he's still dancing around he better regroup for mark coleman if he's smart jeff he blotnick is standing by waiting to talk to ferrozo as soon as scott's ready and jeff's ready we'll check in all right jeff take it away go ahead jeff thank you bruce scott you said in the interview we had yesterday that you said it was destiny that you would make it to the finals did you dream that you could be Tank Abbott? Let me tell you something, that's all I thought about. I said I wanted to be out of the UFC as the only guy that ever whooped Tank Abbott. A man that has a reputation and hasn't fought nobody. Now he finally came up against somebody that's as big and as tough. I'm a little bit banged up. Never once did he rock me, not once. Well, your first entrance into the UFC, you lost to Scott Bolander. Your next entrance was here. You look like a different fighter. What has made the difference for you? There's the man I owe it all to right there. I owe it all to that guy right there. I called him up and said, come train me, because I know I can do this. I know there ain't anybody that can beat me. I said, I need your tenacity, your training, the man right there, come here. Well, you're gonna get tested. Well, you're gonna get tested here. Your next fight is against the reigning champion, Mark Coleman. How do you see that fight going? Same way, same way, same exact thing. Well, we wanna wish you the very best of luck. Congratulations to you and your coach, Don Frost. 